We're in the 2024 Jeep Gladiator, coming in at over $66,000 in this fully loaded Mojave. Today I'm going to tell you if it's worth that chunk of change for this Jeepified truck. Silly me, I was looking for a hood latch on the inside. Of course, the Jeeps have hood clips here. There we have it. 3.6 liter naturally aspirated V6. Long live the V6, guys. This is one of the few pickup trucks that you can still get with a naturally aspirated V6. The Nissan Frontier comes to mind. Uh, this has 285 horsepower, 260 pound-feet of torque made exclusively to the ZF 8-speed automatic, which is a fantastic automatic transmission. I'm getting about 17 miles a gallon on this Jeep truck. And then latch number one, latch number two. And yes, we got a refresh for 2024 on the Jeep Gladiator. The grill's a little bit more rounded to my understanding, a little bit more cutesy. I think it's an awesome looking truck. My wife, Cassie, she's always been a fan of Jeep design, and she is said she actually likes the looks of this truck Jeep, the Gladiator, more than the uh, the Wrangler. And she, I'm like, well, why is that? And she said, well, it just looks more unique. It looks more different. It stands out a little bit more. And I, I would say it absolutely does, especially in this Mojave trim with the, the cool decals, but the big tires, we got the Fox shocks underneath as well. Um, you can see a little bypass down there for an additional shock. I didn't even notice that the first time I looked for the front shocks. And then if we come to the back shocks, look at those, a, a piggyback system as well. So, I mean, I've just been taking this on the streets. Here in Florida, we don't have deserts to run this through, but we do have sand, but I'm not going to run this through sand. Don't, don't get your hopes up. Now, there's tons of ground clearance here, and that makes the Jeep hard for kids to get into. Uh, the, you can get additional little steps to help the kids getting in and out but like this is a huge ask for little kids to get into so hopefully dads and moms you've been doing your lifts because you're gonna be lifting kids a lot to get into the back of that um, come to the rear i love the orange hooks here that matches really really nicely or shows a contrast nicely and complements nicely this blue paint color rear tail lights fully led look really really nice here's going to be your third brake light Beautiful orange Jeep accent. And looking underneath, yes, we have a big fat spare tire as well. Uh, this is optional, this 400 watt cargo powered accessory. And I think it comes also with this tonneau cover option too, uh, which I'm not gonna open up or get into, but you can uh, put quite a bit of weight in here. I'll put what the payload capacity is. Uh, and you can also tow up to, I, I wanna say, if you get the optional towing package, 7,700 pounds. Stock is around, 4,000 pounds if I remember right. This can tow more. Uh, there's a beautiful bird that went overhead uh, as I'm pretty much in the Everglades, but you can tow more uh, with this Gladiator than you can with the, the normal Wrangler. Uh, so if you want a Jeep that can tow and you want a Jeep that's a truck, uh, here you go. Uh, this has also the optional hard top. The base models will have a soft top and getting on the inside, you're gonna just have basic materials, a little mat pocket on the side, mat pocket on the back. Love the all weather Jeep mats here. Uh, cloth seats, even though it's $66,000, but cloth seats. Uh, let me know if you guys are okay with just cloth seats in here. Now, let's fold this down. Let's see what we got back here. Top tether for child seats, an additional mat pocket, a little bit of storage back there as well. You can slide that window open. It is not automatic. And if you see, there's actually a tiny light back there. So getting your belongings behind the back seats you're, you have some illumination, I like that detail. You can roll down the windows right in the center, right? Because you can take off Jeep doors and so they don't have the window controls on them. Uh, additional uh, 400 watt power plug here. USB options, uh, not only C, but A as well. Nice cup holders in the back here as I fumble around to close those. Speakers above, what do I think about the sound system? I think it's pretty bad. I have to really tone down the bass in this system because all the bass is really boomy, doesn't sound good. Uh, now this top, this headliner here is a game changer. I've driven in Jeeps and in Broncos that don't have this sort of insulation from um, the, the sound going over, the wind going over the Jeep. So this is a must have if you're getting uh, the hard top, for example. So I really, really like uh, this headliner here. Supposedly you have more leg room here than you do with the Wranglers. I would say it's six foot one. Sitting by my, behind myself at six foot one, I have, I have good leg room. Headroom's good too, especially if you take the top off. So let's get into the front seat. And it is, even for me at 601, it's not easy to get out of there. It's a pretty narrow opening. But getting in the front, again, basic materials here, 
for the removable doors. We got the Mojave lettering here on the shoulders. These are heated seats here, but they're not power. They are uh, old school uh, for 66K. I mean, as long as you're getting the Jeep experience, some people might not, not care so much about having manual seats, but let me know if that would bother you guys. This is how you activate the power plugs in the bed as well as the back seat. So again, on the inside, I like this leather, uh, leather wrapped steering wheel. The stitching, nah, it's pretty messy. Re actually, re really messy, but I do like the bronze color of it. You can see I'm getting 17 miles per gallon. I've been idling it for about 20 minutes. So I got maybe about 18 miles per gallon before that best case scenario driving around town at steady speeds it does have start stop engine technology but it doesn't uh, it doesn't affect me much it's rarely this cool this time of year in florida uh, so that's why i actually felt the start stop engine turn on because i'm not cranking the ac but if you're driving this in the middle of the day down here the engine's running all the time to keep the ac going for 2024 as well we have this really nice standard 12 inch screen here uh, i really really like it now there are some differences on this model it does have navigation and you have to pay for uh, pay for navigation but you also have android auto, auto and apple carplay so i don't see why you would need to pay for uh, navigation unless uh, you're i don't know you're not gonna have cell service um it also has hd radio antenna built into this the the windscreen here i think that this that's what this line is right here is the antenna which is pretty cool pretty cool pretty pretty futuristic all the jeep -y things you're gonna have here like gorilla glass the little jeeps running around different parts of the vehicle you have all that jeepiness going on here even though it's it's a truck the plethora of knobs and buttons here just makes me happy it's really easy there's no learning curve figure it out really quickly and here's i believe the optional rear locking diff you can't get a front locker on the gladiator that i'm aware of but correct me if i'm wrong and of course you have all your auxiliary input buttons there too uh here's your shifter with the little gladiator right there i love i love jeep shifters they feel like like pop cans or soda cans they're really substantial and then here's your um, your transfer case control from too high to four high to four low traditional parking brake love that um, and this is one of the few trucks you can still get in a manual transmission um, the Tacoma also offers a manual transmission as well and I don't recommend getting the Tacoma in the manual nowadays the automatics is so much better but I haven't driven this vehicle this Jeep anyways uh, in the manual so I can't say which which provides a better experience it really is going to be up to the driver anyways but uh, I'm really curious how the manual would be compared to this eight speed this eight speed is pretty pretty fantastic a little tool kit here um, this lifts up as well and then you see an additional USB port there for connectivity so that being said let's shut the door and start driving the jeep pickup truck all right first thing you're going to notice being in the jeep once you start driving you sit really high up off the ground which that's what a lot of people like jeeps for this big commanding presence and that unique jeep feel i definitely get it in here and honestly it feels like i'm pretty much driving a wrangler except i feel like it has slightly better road manners than a Wrangler, just slightly. The longer wheelbase, it's significantly longer here than a Wrangler, which is not gonna help it off-road, but it does help it on-road. Longer wheelbase typically means a more smooth, a more stable ride. And I do feel like this is a definitely a more enjoyable vehicle out of the two, out of the Wrangler, uh, uh, to be an on-road vehicle. Now, I don't remember this being a trait on the Wrangler, but it's definitely here on the Gladiator is that the steering is just, I never know what it's doing. I have to recorrect this thing quite often. So just a slight input, you don't feel like that would be enough to change the direction of the wheels. And then, you know, before you know it, you're on the other side of the road. So you just have to be a little bit more vigilant than any, pretty much any other car I've driven uh, that, in recent memory anyways, because this thing just has a mind of its own with the steering. It just wants to go all over the place. This is not the vehicle for you if you check your phone all the time. Well, no vehicles for you, but like especially like you got to have your eyes pretty much glued on the road because you, you can't feel what the tires are doing. Now, some people complain about noise in the Gladiator, and that might be true compared to other pickup trucks. 
like the Tacoma, for example, like the, the Frontier, like the Colorado. I've reviewed all those trucks fairly recently. I would say it's much better than a Wrangler though. And it definitely helps with this padded headliner here. I have all, quite a bit of insulation. I don't get too much tire noise or road noise either, which I was expecting for a Jeep. I was expecting just to be screaming. There's a Gladiator right there, hauling stuff. What a, what a pickup truck should be doing, right? Um, thank you, Mr. F-150 for letting me in. And then as I get into that V6 here, I love it. I love this powertrain. It's simple, it's old school, it's predictable. It has a nice sound to it, and it's also smooth. You don't have any turbos, you don't have any hybrid stuff going on. And surprisingly, there, you know, rest in peace V6 diesel that used to be in the Gladiator. I don't know, the take rate must have been small on it, but I'm sure there's a few diehard diesel guys out there that are pissed about it. But yeah, there's no plug-in hybrid of this. And that's the best selling Wrangler is the 4xe, right? There's no 4xe of this pickup truck, which is kind of surprising. With this longer wheelbase too, they could put a, put a really large battery in here and you can get more than 22 miles of electric range. I think that's what I got when I tested the 4xe Wrangler. So if you could put a big battery in here and get 30, 35, 40 miles of EV range, that'd be pretty cool. And you'd get additional power. And I would love it if they kept the V6, but I remember that, you know, 4xe has a two liter turbo. So it's, it's awfully complex and the fuel economy uh, improvement doesn't make up for the cost increase for the 4xe, but it is cool, it is cool. Going by traffic, I don't get a lot of noise coming through. And maybe I'm not judging this based off of a normal vehicle. I'm, I'm probably judging this because I know that I'm in a Jeep, but this is quieter than any Wrangler that I've ever been in from tire and road noise to wind noise. Yeah, I can barely hear the truck next to me. I'm not going that fast, I'm going like 50, but I, I don't have to yell in here like I do in Broncos and, and most Wranglers. So. Jeep's done a good job making this a more civilized vehicle, and it needed to be as it's a pickup truck. It's no longer uh, a Jeep kind of in a, a world of its own. It's it's a Jeep pickup truck, and so they had to kind of up the game here uh, to make it uh, compete against normal pickup trucks, and they did a good job. I'm very impressed overall with the Gladiator as long as you uh, you know it's it's quirkiness when it comes to drifting around and not really knowing what's going on with the steering. That's really the only con I can think of. And you can take the top off and turn it into a proper Jeep, right? One thing I will say is that 65K and I don't have blind spot monitor, nor do I have like a digital rear view mirror. I also don't have like a lane centering technology here. I do have radar cruise control, but... So honestly, I feel like this is the better Jeep for people who don't need to go off-roading all the time. This will off-road just fine, but the Wrangler will kick its butt off-road. There's no, there's no denying that, but like, I got the fancy shocks on here. Now, here's the, here's the thing. I really like the Gladiator. I like it a lot more than I thought I was going to based off my previous experience with the Wranglers. Would I pick this over, let's say, the new Tacoma? Would I pick it over uh, the Frontier? Uh, would I pick it over the Colorado? Um, well, it's got a leg up over all of them in terms of being a Jeep. It's got this cool factor that none of those trucks have. It's kind of like, in, in theory, it's, it's almost in a league of its own, even though it still competes there. Another thing that I really like about this truck, it's simple. I just have a V6 and an eight-speed auto. There's nothing fancy going on here. It's, you know, it's the test of time right here with the V6 will last. And so only the Nissan Frontier has that same sort of simplicity. The road manners of all of its competition are way better, um, but this truck does feel bigger than most of its competition. And it might be longer, I haven't even looked at the dimensions. It feels bigger. It doesn't feel like an F-150 though, but it feels like somehow it's more substantial than the new Frontier, the new Tacoma for whatever reason. But 66K for this? Absolutely not. In my area, I did some searching. I can get some Sport and Sport S models and that's that's the sweet spot for this truck. Get the same engine, same transmission. Go ahead and get that as I get diesel blown on me. Uh, go ahead and get the Sport and Sport S. They're only going for like 
the mid to low 30s in my area. Now, that's priced way better than the new Tacoma. And I think I think I might rather have this than the new Tacoma. You guys might be thinking, Kirk, you're crazy. But I really like this truck and I like how unique it is. I like it's like having, it's almost like having a Tacoma and having a Jeep all, all bundled into one. It's a cool truck. The road manners are terrible compared to the Tacoma, but it's not terrible on road. It's just not as good as, as the competition. Is it better than the Nissan Frontier? Well, the problem with the Nissan Frontier, it was my favorite midsize pickup truck coming into driving this. I, I still think the Frontier provides a better value overall with its more potent V6, silky smooth automatic, has a nine speed, this is an eight speed. They're both great uh, transmissions. Um, I think, I think I'd be taking the Frontier over this, assuming because in my area, I can get the Pro 4X uh, Frontier for like 33K. And that provides incredible features, way better than the Gladiator Sport and Sport S will. It's just, you get that Jeep charm that the Frontier doesn't provide. But the Frontier is a lot better on road, a lot better on road, way, way more quiet, way more civilized. Um, and it's just, it's a fantastic truck for the money. It's hard to pick this over the Tacoma, but it, there's a lot going for this that's just so unique. And I know this vehicle doesn't sell maybe as well as the Tacoma or the Colorado. I mean, I've driven the Colorado too. I would rather easily have this over the Colorado, in my opinion. I'd probably pick this over most Tacoma grades, but the Frontier still takes the cake especially with how it's priced right now in my area mid to low mid to low 30s for the top line frontier where this is mid to low 30s for the entry level models on the gladiator it's just the gladiator has that you know i can say it over and over has that jeep charm it's a jeep thing right it is charming and you either love it or you hate it and some days i love it some days i hate it um and I know the fuel economy may be better here. Some of the road manners might be better with the smaller tires, but, and, and maybe the road manners would be a little bit different if I didn't have this fancy Fox shock suspension too. So I, you know, without having drive, driven the base models with the cloth tops, maybe those are so noisy, I couldn't live with it. I don't know, but here in Florida, I don't, I don't mind soft tops to so just take them off, right? Especially during the winter time where it doesn't rain every day. But anyways, I'm gonna end it there. Jeep well done with the Gladiator. I liked it a lot more than I thought it was going to. Uh, it's a great all around little pickup, it's not little, all around mid-size pickup truck. As we know the entry level pickup trucks, that's not the Ford Maverick for example, or the Hyundai Santa Cruz. They all got, they're all massive now. And this truck feels big. This is a truck I could, I could absolutely live with um, as long as you can get past the funky steering. Let me know what you'd be picking down below. If you have 35K to spend, 35K gets you like a base SR5 Tacoma. It gets you the Sport or Sport S. If you get lucky, you get the Sport S here on this uh, Gladiator. Or you for 35K, you can get a Nissan Pro 4X. That's the top of the line for the Nissan. And that, that truck is just, it's hard to beat right now for the price to performance. But let me know which one you would be spending for around 35, 40K. And I'll see you guys battle it out down below. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for more truck reviews. Stay tuned for more automotive news and reviews coming from the channel. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.